together up here. From the breaking waves on our rock-bound coast, through towering woods beneath stormy skies, over icy ground and granite hills, we ride together over the bridges that bind us, the fire in our hearts that fed a revolution, through falling leaves across iron paths. The roll of the stirring drums unearths the humble, hungry, and fun. We ride together up here. When the lantern is raised, we answer its call. As strong as pines in winter, uniting every village and town, whether here, there, or anywhere, we ride together. These are your riders, your lantern lighters, the pride of New England. Like those before them, they embrace the challenge. Every kick, every pass, every tackle, every free jack on their feet. The anthem of freedom on our lips. We ride together up here. Hello and welcome to the New England Free Jack series of live shows called Midnight Ride. It's episode 10, November 2021, and we're delighted to have your company wherever you're watching us. If you're watching it live, delayed, catching it on the Rugby Network, or listening to us on the podcast series. I'm Dallas Stafford, former US Sevens Eagle and current World Rugby commentator, and I'll be your host for this action-packed 75-minute show. That's right, a bit more today, because what's on tap? Well, plenty. We have the vampire, straight from New Orleans, Holden Youngert. We need to catch him, of course, when the sun goes down. Then we have MLR Collegiate Draft Pick from 2021, Anthony Adamchek. He joins me at Fort Quincy, home of the New England Free Jacks, for a little tour. We then have Super Rugby player Jesse Peretti, the Maori Happy Gilmore, that joins the squad for 2022. Follow that with a special guest, the MLR Commissioner George Killebrew. Fresh from the latest Season 5 news, it's always a hot episode when King George joins us and we give him the red carpet treatment as usual. We'll then follow that up with uh, Peter Janssen and Kyle the Bald Eagle, two players joining us yet again for next season. We'll get an update from CEO of the Flame, Alex Magleby. And finally, we'll give away some prizes in the A to Z giveaway with Jack's Rangers, Phil Harris, tuning in live as well. Well, let's start with Season 5, the schedule. It is out. Free Jacks play 16 regular se- season matches, eight of them at Fort Quincy at Veterans Memorial Stadium. You can become a season ticket holder. Just visit freejacks.com and click tickets on the top left-hand corner on the website. I was at the final match last year, and it was such a vibe. News on the schedule, two, three matches against New York. That'll be the Charter Cup deciding between the two sides. Key dates, the format, Feb 5, the kickoff, and then three teams from each conference will go into the postseason, which is very exciting as well. Other great things we got for you in store, the Free Jacks Campus Ambassador Program. If you're a student in New England, you're interested in rugby, marketing, sales, a potential career in sports, Please apply at freejacks.com, the website. It's a brilliant idea to spread the game and continue doing great things off the field as well. And speaking of great things in the community, the New England Team of the Week continues to highlight legends on the field. They play here in the East Coast. Congrats to those selected of the past month. So great to see so many faces and teams featured here by the New England Free Jacks. All right, so we have 17 players that have been announced to the 2022 roster. Those players include Joe Johnson, Quentin Newcomer, Dougie Fife, Jesse Paretti, Mitch Wilson, Justin Johnson, Wayne Van der Bank, Josh Larson, Harry Barlow, Foster DeWitt, John Poland, Jack Reeves, Sean Jacobian, Bodine Waka, Carl Sequeira, Peter Janssen, and our next guest, who's one of my favorites, the vampire, Holden Youngert. Bloody heck, what uh, what time is it, pal? About 3 a.m. over here on the East Coast. Oh, man, no wonder. Well, it's the bloody vampire that's finally oh, yeah. made his way here to the East Coast. Welcome, Holden Young. It's so great to finally see you, and thanks for joining us, Free Jacks Live. I know the fans have been waiting a long time to see you, the night owl, finally, finally crawl out of bed. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, you know, ready to rip into it in the next couple months and uh, enjoying every second I've had up here so far. Awesome. Awesome, pal. Well, let's first get into the nickname, The Vampire. It's certainly one of my favorites, but not everybody knows where it came from and how it kind of was set up and teed up. So well, what are your memories from uh, from that glorious day? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, it's definitely one of your favorite nicknames, probably because you came up with it, you know. Um, it goes back college days at St. Mary's. I think a sevens tournament. I had a notoriously bad haircut, a shoddy uh, dye job, and, uh, you know, the way the sun glinted off me. Uh, you know, might have might have been reminiscent of uh, Twilight or something like that. 
certainly was. I mean, you had like, it was like blondish, bleached, kind of like whitish hair. And it was, you know, it was, it was a night game, as you said, a night tournament uh, for, the, for the most part. And um, you were pretty scary out there. I will say that. So I, I think it stuck and uh, I've really enjoyed pulling it out over the years, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Let's start as a young vampire, right? When you were growing up as a young kid, what sort of sports did you get into? And then parlay that into how you finally picked up a rugby ball. Yeah, yeah. So I played um, I played just about every American sport. I, I grew up, I was playing baseball. I played a lot of soccer. That was kind of my main sport. And then, you know, as things slowly started to change when I got a little bit older, I wasn't so good at soccer anymore. I got a little more physical, catching cards left and right on the soccer field. So my uncle and my dad played rugby um, back in the day. They were, they were the first ones to put a ball in my hand. I think I remember in like fifth grade or so, there was like a bit of a show and tell. I brought the rugby ball. I taught the class how to pass it, you know, and then years down the line, I get to pick it up freshman year of high school and, uh, you know, kept running with that ever since. Wow, that's cool. I love that background. And it's always fascinating to see how the sport comes about. And it's cool you had family members playing. Now, you've got a couple of other vampires in the family. You've got some, some siblings, right? Do, uh, do they play a lot of sports or, or do they currently still, still take the sports field? Yeah, yeah. So I have three brothers. I've got uh, two older brothers and a twin brother who's also older. Yeah, they are, they they were big track athletes. They were um, runners. They're the these big uh, you know thoroughbred esque runner types. And uh, you know, I got the short end of the stick and uh, missed out on a couple inches and just you know found my way on the rugby field where there's a you know a spot for everyone out there. Yes, exactly. Well, let's talk about that, right? So St. Mary's the Gales, famous program under Tim O'Brien. Tell us about your time there. What did you love about it? And give some some highlights as well. Oh, I loved it. Um, every second of it. It was just so, you know, you the program that Tim and uh, Johnny Everett that they built there was just you live um, and breathe, sleep rugby. You know, um, obviously, they've got big focus on the school. That's why you're there. You get both done. Right. And rugby is just, it's wonderful there. It's, it's, I'd say it's probably as close to, you know, high caliber development um, as you could get anywhere in the world. But I had some great times there, you know, won three national championships with the team um, in 15s and then won a sevens national championship. Um, got to play alongside and under some great players, uh, learned a lot. So it's good times there. Yeah, I'll never forget that um, that one moment uh, you had with that with your number eight, Kevin O'Connor. I think it was a brilliant little eight nine move in the final yeah. of the, one of those D1A championships on national television against Life University, and that's when you dived in full flight. It was a fantastic movement, and and then you went with him, and you guys went to New Orleans and played major league rugby there together. What was what was that's that like? True. Yeah, what was it like coming out of college into professional rugby? Because finally, the setup was there for you to be able to do that. What was that transition like, and how did you enjoy your time in New Orleans? New Orleans was, uh, you know, one of the best cities on earth, you know, by far some of my best years of rugby there. I had a great time with the coaches, with uh, everyone on the team, the fans. It's wonderful. Coming out of college, it was, it was great. I actually, right before I played MLR, I got a shot to go down to Canberra and uh, do a little bit of developmental stuff in and alongside the Brumbies. Played some really hard-nosed men's club rugby out there. And so that, I think that gave me good prep for it alongside coming out of St. Mary's. But that first year was a wild ride, you know, being 20 something in New Orleans, um, new city, never been to it. And we, we had a blast. It was, you know, it was really living the dream. Yeah. And the chemistry looked good as well. You know, you have a good, good setup there in the Nate Osborne. Uh, you had some funny chirps during the season two, uh, a couple of seasons as they went on. Um, they played one of them the other day on the rugby network is very funny. Uh, is that something you think as a scrum half, you're always going to, you always have to have quick remarks, right? Because, uh, you know, with your smaller body shape and your talkative mouth, you kind of have to be on the edge of your seat there, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, sometimes they, uh, you know, I kind of glaze over sometimes and I don't know, I fire up, you know, I save it for the weekend. I fire up on Saturday and things just come out of my mouth. I'm a, I'd probably say I'm pretty lucky that that's all the mic caught and, uh, you know, I could be canceled just about now. So, Yes, yeah, true. Fair enough. Yeah, you've got you to keep it reasonably, reasonably clean. <laughs> Let's switch across to Boston. How long have you been in town? You've come through with your girlfriend, Maddie. How are you guys enjoying being set up there so far? Yeah, it's, it's wonderful up here. Um, we got up here in September, so right at the end of summer. Constantly amazed by the, by the fall foliage. Um, something I've never seen coming from California and then down in um, New Orleans. It's just not like that. So it's beautiful. Our, we got our feet on the ground now. I've met a good number of people in the city. Um, she's, she's fully into a master's nursing program. So, you know, we're both busy in our own ways, but, um, loving every second up here in the Northeast. 
Awesome. Well, Vampire, before we let you go, I know it's it's uh, still a few hours of sleep that you're able to get in before the sun rises and then you got to hide away. Let's give the fans a message, the folks that have supported you all the way through and your new family and friends here in, in New England uh, who are ready to cheer you on for the Free Jacks. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to say thanks for everyone for the support. You know, there's too many people to name, but, you know, you're, you're the reason we do it, you know. I think I could speak for every single rugby player out there, friends, family, um, fans, you know, that they're all basically the same, but you know, you're the reason we do it. And we, we go out there, we, we talk trash, we get beat up every, uh, every other weekend or so, you know, I want to say everybody watch your next and um, we look forward <laughs> to seeing you on the pitch soon. Uh, you've been an absolute star and we can't wait to see you in the new England free Jacks Jersey. Thanks for joining us, my friend on free Jacks live. Yeah. Thank you, darling. Oh, the vampire rumored is only available for night games. Uh, hopefully he can, Get out there earlier and, and put his skills to the test. Our next guest is also quite a character, one of my favorites, uh, and I can see why his teammates love him so much. Here's MLR collegiate draft pick Anthony Adamchek. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the home stadium of the New England Free Jacks, Veteran Memorial Stadium. I have a special guest with me. It's Big T Mobile, they call him. Unbelievable stuff. Anthony Adam Check, welcome my friend. Selected in the MLR Collegiate Draft. How excited are you to be back in New England? Very excited. Yeah, I love New England. Let's talk about Penn State. You were the captain of you were captain of motivation. Uh, I was self-proclaimed supervisor of team morale. I, yeah, I've, I've, I've stolen that from a couple other supervisors of, around the, uh, the college sports world. Um, but yeah, uh, I, was, I, I think it's very important to keep yeah. the guys happy, keep, yeah. uh, keep the room happy, keep the coaches happy. You know, it helps. I like this guy already. All right, <laughs> let's take a tour of the stadium, pal. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's check out the locker rooms, buddy. So, jerseys will be hanging up here. This is the vibe. This is where things will happen. Yeah, I can see it now. How's the acoustics? And the, uh, pretty good, pretty good. Showers which, which specifically. Hold, which, hold on, I know you're a dance champion. Yeah. A hundred undefeated dancers? I mean, that's a rough estimate. I've been in a lot, just about, uh, just about every time I went out in school. Are you going to show some? Nah, the, 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 vibe, the vibe is after, we'll, we'll have to upgrade the speaker system in here. Before. <laughs> I've got your name on the board, T-Mobile, with a check mark. So, let me get my name on the roster. So, let's talk about, do you have a ritual before the game? Are you a quiet kind of guy? You love popping the music, love dancing? What, what's your uh, Yeah, I definitely love dancing. I like having, honestly, happy music. I'm not yeah. a big fan of like yeah. hardcore or anything angry. Well, you won't like the poltergeist. Devin Geist is good death metal band, so that's probably not going to be. It's a fact. <laughs> no, yeah, that, I'm not sure that'll match up with my, uh, my normal Katy Perry. <laughs> and then listen, after the game, do you go see family and friends, what, what kind of things, or you just come back in here, sip a couple of cold ones, what are you up to? Uh, no, after the game, I, I love socializing, always got to go uh, talk to the parents if they're there, the girlfriend, you know, got to... Gotta treat the number one fan. The girlfriends, the sweet tea, ladies, yeah, you're sweet, right. Sweet tea is taken. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not that anyone wanted it. <laughs> Brilliant. Not that anybody wanted it. Sweet tea. Love you, pal. Uh, the full video, we get all that on the YouTube channel, Free Jack's YouTube channel, up later and on the socials as well. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. I see some lot of good comments. Ted Black is here. Be Ted Black. Be the hero. Be the legend. Share the news of the Free Jacks around the globe. MLR is absolutely taking off. Uh, there it is. Happy 246. Shout out to my fellow Marines. Absolutely unbelievable what they do for our country and, of course, the world as well. So brilliant stuff. Let's get on to our next guest. A big signing for the MLR, Super Rugby's Jesse Paretti. I caught up with a Kiwi sensation in the land of the long white cloud. Leonard Brown back in the action and breaking tackles. Gets up beautiful ball away to Sarakula. Look at the big man go. Ball scooped up by Weber. He's cut down but manages to pop it to the support. Well, going back to Soakula. Now Akumoli floats the pass wide. Nangeville, Nangeville, penalty. Oh, this is amazing from the Chiefs. Kia ora, Jesse. Thanks for joining us, my friend. Good, brother. How's it going? Good yourself, man. Listen, you were just dressing up for a bit of a golf day there, so may I ask what's your <laughs> handicap? <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm, I was pretty low, actually, before my injuries. I was at 14. Very nice. I was, going, I was cracking it right. 
You certainly were, pal. Well, listen, <laughs> let's let, let's first touch on the exciting news. You're joining us here in New England. Tell us how the move signing to the US came about and how excited are you? Uh, yeah, so I was, um, last year I took off, I left New Zealand and I went to um, Japan to have a little, just to go for a bit of a look because I'm getting, I suppose, getting at the back end of my rugby career age. So um, I'm just looking to get, you know, just get around, experience new cultures and I was trying to get back to Japan and then this opportunity came up in New England and I was like, oh yeah, that'll be unreal. And I love NFL, so I'll be trying to get as many Pats games as I can and stuff like that. But um, I'm just looking forward to, to you know, new experience somewhere way different to New Zealand anyway. So, yeah. Tell us about Japan. You know, did you get a chance to play many games there or did lockdown happen earlier? Yeah, I played, I played maybe, because uh, I've got quite a long preseason there. So I played uh, five preseason games and then I played two during the season and I was the first two. And I pinged my hamstring and the coaches didn't want to take me off. So I had to carry on playing. I was like, oh, bugger it. I'll just keep going. And then like the last two minutes, I just like tore, tore my hammy and I was done. And then that was me for the whole season. And then tried to come back too early because they, oh, they asked me. They, it's, it's a real weird setup there. Like the coach, like if they want you to play, it doesn't matter if you're injured, you play. So we were, I was just like, what? And he wanted me to play in the weekend. And I was like, sweet, I'll try to get ready. Got through the first day of training all good, uh, gym. And then on the... Second big day, went to go take off and pinged it again, and then I was done for the season, which was, Man, an, that, was annoying. Yeah, well, also, it sounds like a hard setup there. The fact that you've got to play through, you know, <laughs> that's oh, pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah, well, we'll, yeah, we'll I'm, look not, I'm not too close. Like, I've played through heaps of injuries, but hamstring, because yeah. I've never had muscle problems before that. But yeah, it was just a different experience, and it was a bit weird. Well, we'll look after you this side when you get here, so don't worry about that. Uh, let's <laughs> yeah, uh, let, let, exactly let's track back. You know, for the folks that are tuning in for the first time, they haven't met you as well. I know you played a ton of rugby in New Zealand, obviously the basically the home of rugby. Tell us about some of the yeah. teams you represented and and your favourite moments so far. Two thousand and fourteen, I um, debuted for Taranaki, which I that's where I currently am at the moment. The year after that, I went to a Chiefs development, played a game just not far about an hour down the road. Um, had a game in that and then the coaches for the development team were actually at the Bay of Plenty, uh, my team, so they approached me and hit me up and I was like, you know, what are you up to and stuff like that? I was like, oh, no, nah, not much, keen to play and then they were like, oh, they were like yeah, we'll give you a contract, come over, drive over now. I was like, yep, yeah, on my way. Trapped all my stuff in my car and I was over there, man. I was like, yes, no more working. <laughs> no more digging holes all day. Ah, oh, man, it was breaking me in. But um, yeah, so I went over there, went to the Bay of Plenty for two years um, and then got the opportunity to come back home to Taranaki in 2018, which I did um, come back. I was doing preseason, and the Chiefs had a few injuries and got called into the Chiefs. And that was a pretty big, uh, big moment for myself getting to debut for the Chiefs. I think Sam Kane was injured. Um, one of the other boys went down with uh, he had appendix problems or something like that. And they just took me just in case. And um, I was looking to jump on. Oh, if, you know, if everyone was all good, I was going to leave and then go and play club rugby back in Taranaki. And they're like, oh, now, mate, you're on. And I was freaking out. It was unreal. And then, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't even explain the feeling. It was unreal getting to play. It's in Rotors as well, where I started playing um, like professional rugby in Bay Plenty. We were always playing Red Royal. Pretty hectic. And I got to, like, we lost the game, but I got a got a bit of a meat pie. So I was stoked about that. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I a shit about it. Yeah, no, well, I tell you what, there was, there's a brilliant highlight of a, you know, a full hundred meter try, which you finish off uh, diving in, uh, uh, in super rugby. And it was a, a, a big team. That's, right. That's right. Exactly. Voted for try of the year. It was something special, my friend. Uh, you've got great stamina and great fitness. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just try to get around the field as long and fast as I can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know fans are eager to see you this side. Uh, let's talk about, oh, yeah, your, uh, let's talk a bit about your family, any siblings, any other family members that have played sports to a high level? Uh, no, not really. Um, uh, yeah, I've got, so I've got, um, I've got an older brother, Tarangi. He's got a, oh, my half brother. And then with my mother, I've got me and my brother, uh, my sister, Levi, Daniel and Caleb. And then my um, my dad with his fiance now, and um, we've got a younger brother, and he's uh, he's like fourteen or something, Hawaii. So there's about these six of us all together, and yeah, old man got around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, almost a seventh team just for your family name. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So we like most of us all played rugby, and my brother he played a bit of um, volleyball and Aussie, and he was quite good at golf. My older brother, and then my younger brother, um, he's cruises around all over the place and just gets gigs and 
my sister's a teacher and my little brother's just studying at the moment, which is all good. So that was cruising along. That's awesome. And then when you're not playing rugby, what kind of things outside of golf would you be get up to? Outside of golf, geez, that takes up a lot of my time. If I'm not <laughs> usually, if I'm not on the field, I'll be at the golf course. Honestly, I'll just live there because it's just down the road from my house where I live. So oh, it's me every day. What else do I get into? Oh, I don't know. I just cruise around, do whatever. <laughs> I love it. I love. It. We'll be cruising around Boston. Time. We'll be cruising around Boston with you. Is there one oh, yeah, fact? Sure. Is there one fact, Jesse, that not many people know about you? So before I was playing my team, I was a, um, I was a midfielder. I played twelve and thirteen. Oh, and wow. it wasn't until I, yeah, it wasn't until I come to started playing semi pro that they moved me into the Fords. So I've only been a Ford for like I don't know, eight eight years or something. So basically, your skill sets come from the back line. That's what you're saying, which I yeah, like. Yeah, pretty right? much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I played. Well, actually, I played. Um, when I was younger, I played league. So I was in um, Australia at the Melbourne Storm in 2010. Like that was uh, a big thing. Like especially for my player development, is I was 17 in under 20s team, and it was pretty full on. Like it was full time. Um, and I just come from you know school, never gyms, never ran at all. I just was. I was just turned up. To at the uh, at training and then turn up on the game and I'll play a full game, no dramas. And then I got there and it was just like we were gymming, we we're doing all this running and stuff. I was like, holy, because I was just so young, I've never experienced anything like that. Like I had played um New Zealand Maldives League and and um and like made the uh, Kiwis teams and stuff like that, but like it was next level because we were training with uh, I don't know if you know much about um NRL, but. We were trained with like Cameron Smith and Billy Slater, like big dogs of the NRL, and it was just crazy. Like the, the amount of work that we did, like we'd so it was all good for them because we'd come, we'd gym in the morning for two hours, and then we'd go away and work for half the day, and then we'd come back in the afternoon for like three hours, and it would honestly be like an hour of an hour and a half of just straight running in like thirty five degrees, like just getting absolutely pumped. And then I think that's where I've just picked up the like working hard attitude, like because they were all about mental toughness and stuff like that, which was unreal. And especially being so young and pretty much that was my first experience. So getting brought up in a professional setting, it was definitely eye opening. But for the, in the long run, it's benefited me. Yeah, it set it set you in good stead. You know that's amazing. Oh, yeah. with, the, with, the, with those players, as you mentioned, you know, I obviously follow more rugby than uh, than league, but I know those names for sure. The sort must be really great. You know, we've got yeah. a last couple of questions for you. Any embarrassing moments at all that you've had, whether it's on the field or off the field? <laughs> <laughs> oh, heaps! I can't even count. I am <laughs> I am um, known I am known to have some of the ugliest facials um, in the photos afterwards. So from all the boys, they tagging me and all these ugly photos and stuff, and I was like, oh man, every week, every week, no doubt there's one in there that's terrible, breaks me every time. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, good. Well, we'll get the camera the camera folks to be ready for you. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I might have to then, here, I think. Yeah, well, exactly. Mark, I'll wear your face mask. <laughs> All right, final thing for you. Tell us what excites you about joining Major League Rugby, the competition here, and of course, representing the Free Jacks. Like I said, like early on, it's just a new experience. It's going to be a different level, like different, different style of play of rugby. Um, I know there's the head coach, he's South African, and the um, assistant is Kiwi. So, like, we've got a big range of like, you know, what we can do and how we're going to play. So, I'm looking forward to seeing how everything's going to go and just pretty much getting over there and meeting the boys because that's, you know, that's a big part of it is just getting around and getting to meet new people and, yeah, and it's a whole new place and it's America, like, you know, it's, it's a big place coming from little New Zealand, eh, far out, all our mates like, oh, are you going, you off to America, are you? Because that's me, I'm on. <laughs> so, yeah, happy, I'm just, yeah, ha- I'm happy like, Gilmore, happy Gilmore on tour. Yeah, we'll happy, happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> the Māori happy Gilmore. <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, um, Jesse, yeah. we want to thank you for your time. I know everyone's really eager to get you this side. and, and uh... Well, brilliant there to catch up with Jesse in New Zealand. Of course, the Wi-Fi there is not as strong as it will be here when he gets to the U.S. Uh, what a great character as well. I want to also thank our Free Jack partners, three of them to highlight so far. Alloy Therapeutics, they've been phenomenal. The legends there, vital supporter of the New England franchise, plus Arbella Insurance and Dude Wipes. Hi, yeah, yeah, I'm so ready to... 
combining yard tools with cleaning up? Mom! Bad idea. Hey! Switching to Arbella and combining your home and auto insurance and saving 20% or more? Great idea. Just tidying up. Find your agent at Arbella.com. Dude Wipes saved my chapped rear from toilet paper. Dude Wipes, along with support from your bros, helps you quit toilet paper. When you try to quit toilet paper for Dude Wipes, you may experience increased levels of swagger, improved freshness, and the urge to tell everyone about Dude Wipes. I can't tell you how great it's been using Dude Wipes. Check your local toilet paper aisle for Dude Wipes today. Dude, now that's fresh. Well, great work from our partners there as well. Now, almost halfway through the show, the interview you've all been waiting for, the MLR commish and part-time helicopter pilot George Killebrew is up now. Live on the monthly Free Jack show is MLR commissioner George Killebrew. King George, always smiling, always pouring the champagne, and that's why I love you, my friend. <laughs> Great to be here, darling. I've missed you. Let's, let's get back to some rugby here soon. I can't wait, you know. Well, let's first talk about your, your sons. They seem to be growing up and things are going well on your side, right? Everything's great. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I have a, a sophomore in college and a junior in high school. So uh, you can imagine the uh, drama that goes along with that. But all things considered, they're doing quite well and we're, we're getting along just fine. So thank you. Oh, that's great to hear. Now, listen, last time I saw you was at the All Blacks USA game. It was obviously a great occasion for fans to gather and see live rugby in person. But one story I haven't told people yet is that, you know, we're lining up, waiting for the Uber to arrive, and there's about a 1,000 cars in line. People are canceling rides left, right, and center. And then out of nowhere, Mark Cuban comes in with a helicopter to pick you up. That's right. I, I didn't want to wait in that line with the rest of people like you. So, yeah, we had to get the helicopter and get out of there. You know, he's got a new company called Uber Copter. Doesn't hold a lot of people, but, uh, no, quite seriously, that was uh, not the, lo- the funnest Uber experience I've ever had, getting out of FedEx Field in the Landover. Exactly. No, but listen, I think that's a good investment. We may, may invest in, in Uber Chopper, you know, for, for some of the folks. I like that idea. Now, listen, speaking of Mark Cuban and things like that, Dallas Jackals are finally featuring in their first ever season. Now, they've been a part of the league for a while. So you're close by. You have a fan a team you can support as a fan. Um, tell us why do you think it took so long, but also very exciting that they're in, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a great group. Uh, it's led by a gentleman by the name of Neil Liebman. Neil is the president of the Texas Rangers in Major League Baseball. So we've added a person to our board that has really great sports experience on on a much higher level, if you will. Um, And then Scott Sanju is the president of the team, and Scott has an unbelievable sports DNA. Uh, His father founded the Dallas Mavericks, who uh, hired me originally. Uh, And then Scott has won every award there is to win in minor league baseball. He ran a team called the Frisco Rough Riders. And as you know, there's about 140 of those teams in minor league baseball, and he won all the awards. So the DNA uh, for Dallas is good. You know, they were going to play last season. And then, of course, you know, we were under COVID. And, you know, when Neil and I talked about it, he said, I just don't think it's right to launch an expansion franchise during COVID. I, I think we're setting ourselves up for failure. And, and he, he had used some of the intelligence he had gotten from Major League Soccer, because if you remember, they had three uh, expansion franchises that all delayed a year. So now uh, the proof is in the pudding, they're on the clock. Uh, we're excited they're gonna play at Globe Life Field, um, which is, you know, they built two new, there's a new baseball stadium in Arlington, but they kept the old one. So they just sold uh, naming rights to that. It's now called Choctaw, and it's in a kind of a football rugby configuration now. So they will play in that one uh, coming up here in February. So we're really excited to welcome them uh, to Major League Rugby. Oh, that's so great. I also love the rivalry that's going to happen in Texas, too, with the Gilgronies and, of course, the Sabercats as well. There's a lot to play for there, so that's going to be really great and keep it interesting as well. A lot of bragging rights. Uh, we have a sponsor that is jumping on board for the quote-unquote Texas Cup that yeah. used to be an Austin and Houston uh, kind of thing, but now we throw Dallas into that, and, you know, we'll see what we got. Good. Well, listen, the, the huge news to come out, obviously, since the season finished in August is the new schedule. Season five, what can we expect 2022 is just around the corner? Well, obviously, we talked about adding a 13th team, which is really great in the history of this league. As you know, it started with seven teams. It grew to nine teams. We played with 12 teams last year, and now we've added the 13th. So that's exciting. But I think the most exciting part as I look at the schedule is 
the fact that all of our teams will be playing in their home stadiums under some sort of normalcy. I mean, really, there was some heroics to get last year in. Um, you know, we had one of our teams had to leave its own country in order to get the competition in, which was our friends in Toronto, you know, having to relocate their entire rugby operation to Atlanta just to get the competition in. So we had our friends in San Diego have to be somewhat nomadic, uh, you know, played some in Vegas, played some back in California. But now I think we have more of a sense of normalcy and everyone can focus in on, you know, their home stadium and really doing our best to fill those seats and have a great entertainment option for our fans out there this coming season. Yeah, you're so right about that. And then speaking of which, you know, the broadcast numbers also looked fantastic. Re really great graphic that came out recently. Can you expect easy viewing for the fans in MLR? Of course, we both know that that's the key driver for getting, you know, more of the audience, particularly here in the U.S., to engage. Yeah, we were elated by our numbers, especially in the finals. You know, to do 2 million households on CBS in prime time, uh, from the historic Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum was a really big moment for this league. Um, and it was a, a very big number as well. So we're excited about that. We haven't completely finished our broadcast relationships on the linear side. So that announcement will be coming. Uh, but what I can tell you, it's even more robust and better in my view than it was last year, uh, which is, is going to be great. Then there was the launch of the rugby network, you know, which was our OTT platform. And, uh, we did that in conjunction with our friends with the Rugby Pass, who are experts at this all around the world. They just weren't doing it in North America. So they, they were looking for a foothold here in North America. We were looking for a partner that would showcase us. Uh, in our first four years, you know, we were kind of the least sexy client, if you will, on other people's platform. So we said, let's start our own. And we did. And we asked the Rugby Pass guys, like, how do we define success in year one? And they said, hey, if you could get 25,000 people to subscribe in year one, I think you're doing well. And we ended up at 45,000 by the end of the season. So obviously we're gonna continue down that path. We're gonna to continue to grow the rugby network. You know, it did a couple of things for us, Don. It not only gave access, you know, for people that wanted to follow all our games and all of our shoulder programming, but players, and I got this feedback from a lot of our international players, you know, players overseas are watching and really three things came out. They were telling their mates that were playing over here. They're like, hey, the quality of play in Major League Rugby has gotten better as, as you went into year four. The officiating has gotten better and the coaching has gotten better. And that's the feedback we got from a lot of international players. And then they're asking their mates, how do I get over there? You know, how, how do I get on one of those teams? And so it, it served a lot of purposes for us. We didn't think that was going to be one of them, really a recruiting tool, if you will. Um, but we're really pleased with that. We'll continue along those lines, continue to grow that audience, and hopefully get the rugby network really, really healthy. Yeah, no, it's looking great. I, I get a million calls from South Africa, like you mentioned, saying, hey, how do I get involved with the league? I, I, you know, this is my resume, and I just have to push them onto the team, say good luck with that. There's a huge amount of interest, which I think is so exciting, you know? Well, now, and now, in South Africa, yeah. too, Darwin. Like, they're having these watch parties at all hours of the morning, and, you know, they're getting people together. I mean, it's, it build, it's building communities in places like that, where there's a couple players that are over here that they want to follow, and their families are getting together, and a lot of those kind of cool stories have come out of it as well, whether it be Australia or South Africa or Ireland or England or, or France, you know, just people kind of, you know, huddling around, not, not in, in, in droves, I'm not talking thousands, but I'm talking, you know, creating a community for Major League Rugby abroad. Yeah, totally. And then speaking of the community locally, I was very impressed with the work done off the field as well. I think that's also key for sustainability. What's your quick review of last year? How do the teams do off the field and, and what do you expect uh, will happen next year? Yeah, I mean, considering COVID, this was an amazing year, which that's hard for people to really understand because everything was a little watered down and couldn't have fans in the stands in certain cities. But when you look at the results after the finals, you know, first we went 99-0. and and 99 and 0 is a big number because we got all 99 of our regular season and playoff matches in. Uh, we didn't have to delay any for COVID, which there are some leagues that, that are, are more well capitalized than ours that couldn't say the same. So that, that's a testament to our players, to our coaches, to our medical personnel for taking our protocols, taking them seriously and abiding by them and having results at the end. You know, so that, that was a major 
kind of a milestone for us. The other side was the commercialization. You know, Major League Rugby hadn't had a lot of great kind of what I call cash paying sponsors. You know, we had some great partners in BIK like Paladin and Rhino and the things you have to have, which don't get me wrong, they're great partners, but we needed companies especially Fortune 500 companies spending money with us. And we were able to add, it started with American Airlines, and then the dominoes kind of fell with Geico, and then guaranteed rates. And by the end of the year, you know, we had 10, what I call blue chip brands spending hard dollars with us. And so that really kickstarted our commercial efforts that, you know, we just look forward to, you know, going forward and, and, and growing that as well. So the off the field stuff, to me, graded very, very high, considering it was a tough year under COVID. Yeah, no, it certainly was. And we're so glad to see that. And then the other big news, of course, is Rugby World Cup bid from USA Rugby coming in 2027, 2031 for the men, 2029 for the women. That must have been very well received by the MLR franchises. And then what are your thoughts also? Because a lot of people talk about the level of play. How will MLR uh, uh, impact the game like Japan did with their top league over years? So if we look at six to 10 years time, you know, when the U.S. hosts the World Cup, where do you think the state of the game will be then? Well, I, first of all, I think it's unbelievable news for the United States, North America, and for Major League Rugby. Uh, if you noticed in the test match, you know, with the All Blacks, every player that was playing for the Eagles played in Major League Rugby last year. So, you know, we're, we're kind of the feeder, you know, into that. So if you think about it, let's just say it's 2031, just for the heck of it. You know, that gives us a 10-year runway uh, to grow the Eagles, to grow Major League Rugby, and if we were to add one or two franchises at, ma- at the Major League Rugby level on that runway, you know, we're a, a 25 to 35 team league in all the major markets in this country and in Canada and other places. So, you know, I think that's that's really exciting. I think we can be a real catalyst for that growth and we're looking forward to it. You know, um, if you remember when the, the sport of soccer first came and brought their World Cup to the United States, there was no Major League Soccer. It was, let's bring, you know, our game to the North American shores, and then maybe a professional league will be born out of it, which is exactly what occurred as Major League Soccer turns 27 years old and Major League Rugby turns five years old. So we kind of inverted it. Our, our, our professional league is here. It's growing. Uh, and if you give us, you know, another 10 years down that runway, uh, it could be, be a really great story because then the youth rugby piece, which we know really needs to grow, will be happening in real time and we'll just make it up in 25 markets. I mean, wouldn't that be wonderful if Major League Rugby was a 25 team league by the time the World Cup comes to the United States shore. So, you know, we'll be developing the game over that runway and really getting those kids playing the game and developing the academy programs and helping on the collegiate side so that once the games actually come, we're going to be way down that pathway and the game should be in a lot better shape in North America by that time. Yeah, it's fascinating, you know, because some players could be 10 years old today that could feature at the that World Cup that the U.S. hosts, you know, so really intriguing, exciting. I know all eyes on America and have always been, but now we're really getting into that stride. Now, last one for you. I know you're a very busy man. I know recently there was an MLR beer tasting that happened. Each team showcased, you know, the brilliant flavors and signature beverages they had. The Free Jacks IPA from Baxter Brewing, I believe, may have won. So when do we pick up our prize? I wouldn't get carried away by saying they won. Uh, what we decided to do, because we had so many different types of beers, we had lagers and IPAs and Hefeweizens, we decided not to crown a winner. But I, I will tell you, all of our teams did pretty well. Now, I don't really remember that Baxter. Oh, yeah, maybe I do. Ah, this one, right? ah, yeah, there he is. There he is, um, King George. It was, it was quite delicious, and I'm looking forward to enjoying one with you at Good. a New England Free Jacks game uh, for, for next season. We can't wait. Quincy is going to host you in style. Red carpet treatment for the king, of course. Uh, George, thanks so much for coming on. And again, brilliant, brilliant work. So exciting. I know there is so many people watching, uh, you know, locally and internationally. And, and Brilliant stuff to see George. Uh, special guest to have him on. Always available to help us out and give us the insight ahead of season five. Well, the legends continue here. Here's Harry Barlow and Carl Sequeira on the A to Z giveaway. What's up, Free Jacks Nation? It's Kyle Square here with my good friend, Harry Barlow. What's up? Uh, we're here 100 days away from the season starting, uh, doing our A to Z raffle. 26 letters in the alphabet, so we're gonna give away 26 prizes. Uh, we're starting off the day with A. And I'm gonna have Harry here pull a name out of the hat. 
And the winner is Catherine Kondrick for Team Sign Ball, which I'm holding. So there you go. Congratulations, Catherine. Um, look after it. And yeah, enjoy your prize. It's A. A for autograph. A for autograph. There you go. There we go. Always correcting me. That's the one. <laughs> Our uh, second prize of the day is uh, the letter B. Here we go. It's for these uh, nice pair of uh, smugglers here. Um, Let's get them while they're hot. Good quality, good quality, good quality. Here we go. Bumble, 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 And our winner is Harrison Pellerin. He's budget smugglers. Harrison, you're my second favorite Harrison after Harrison Ball, obviously. Uh, I miss him every day and I uh, can't wait to hug him again. Congrats. <laughs> here we go. Next up, we got the letter C. Yeah, for coaching session. Big one. This is a big this one here. This is a big one right here. I could use a few of these myself, actually. Bumble, well. bumble, 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 bumble. And our winner is Craig McKenzie. Congratulations, Craig. You'll be uh, on the All Blacks by the end of the year with the coaching we've got, so congratulations. And our uh, next prize is for a day of the team and some uh, dude wipes um, to help you out in the hour of need. Uh, we've all been there. Um, so, Eagle, please. The big D, the big D. Here yeah. we go. David Rothar. Congrats, man. You get to come spend the day with us. Yeah. And you get some sweet dude wipes. Congratulations. <laughs> Last but not least, prize of the day is for a replica mullet of the beautiful eagle here and uh, a hat alongside it, which is uh, personalized by uh, the man himself. Um, anyway, let's find out. I'm actually going to go. E. We are ecstatic for this prize. Ecstatic. My hands are shaking. I can't even pull it out. You got it, you got it. It's only one. You got lost. You gotta redo it, you got lost. <laughs> <laughs> you got lost in there. Let's just go from there. William Lehman. Woo! There Congratulations! You, you got some great gear that will be signed by me. So, big ups to you, William. I hope you like my signature and this sick gear. And if you hate him like I do, then tough luck and still going to get it. And we are elated for you. Are you going to say anything? Yeah, I'll say, I'll say all right, all right, shoot, shoot. And that's, uh, that's us for the day, but there's plenty more prizes coming for um, our brilliant uh, season ticket members. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, super excited to get the season going. Less than 100 days to the season, and I believe less than 60 to pre-season. Um, God help me with my fitness, but we'll get there. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for uh, keep supporting us, and uh, we can't wait to see you at Fort Quincy. If you don't have your season tickets, make sure you sign up so we can sell out Veterans Memorial. It's going to be a doozy. It's going to be a doozy, all right. Uh, those two characters can have their own TV show, I bet. Uh, absolute class. Pure legends. Um, speaking of legends, we have Jack's Rangers. Phil Harris is going to pop on live right now. We're going to give away some more prizes. Why not get a nothing? We have tons of great things. Uh, there he is right there. Big Phil, how are you keeping, pal? Pretty good, pal. How are you doing? Awesome. Where are you calling in from, my friend? Uh, I woke up at 4.30, got on a plane. I'm in North Carolina now in the land of my people, my brother. Oh, that is so great. I know you've got lots of uh, festivities to get after and things like that. But uh, again, I just want to say thanks for popping on and giving us a few of your minutes. Um, give us an update, all the great things you're doing to you know support rugby and the Free Jacks. Oh, man, we're on episode 21 with the Jacks Rangers show just released yesterday. Uh, we've got the vampire on there, the eagle. We got it all, man. Uh, so everybody go check out jacksrangers.com for all of your free Jacks content. The best free Jacks content on the Internet other than this show, of course. That's brilliant. And listen, I know you were saying that that the quick changes were good uh, in terms of the wardrobe. Um, but like me, you also own every single Free Jacks item. And I will say, <laughs> I mean, the merchandise store is amazing. I mean, the missus is trying to turf things out, but I'm just bringing them back in the house. Yeah, I'm financially ruined, but I mean, I'm looking good in, at the same time. So, <laughs> Exactly. You are bloody good. Okay. So listen, pal. Uh, well, just one last question. So who's been your favorite guest so far or somebody that surprised you that you that you were catching up on your show? Oh, man. Uh, Josh Larson is just a class act. We've had him on twice. You know, the captain just oozes excellence uh, every single appearance. And uh, he's actually down uh, at my university's rival right now coaching at Clemson, South Carolina. Um, so I won't hold that against him too much. But uh, yeah, uh, always glad to have him on the show. Uh, he's been fantastic. 
Oh, he's been so great. I know he's uh, his personal PR agent, Karen Gasparino, is on here commenting as well, a t- Toronto Arrows fan, but also fan of the free jazz because of Larson. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's great. Well, uh, pal, you're, you're here to help me give away some prizes. So our A yes, to Z, we, we saw uh, in the jungle there, uh, the Eagle and Harry give away some prizes. Um, and so, so we got prize number F to give away. So what is prize number F? Prize F is a fan pack of gear. Now, I've heard there might be a car inside of this, so that's exciting. Uh, wait a minute. I'm getting a call from Mags right now. Hello? Oh, sorry. No car, but it is a fan pack of gear. Bye, Mags. Love you. Um, so, yeah, so that's what it is. Fan pack of gear. Ambiguous. I understand. Vague, but I'm sure it's going to be awesome. So enjoy that. I like it. Okay, good. Let me pull out. I have my own little hatchet on the side. It's, it's not a horse head. Uh, I know they've got that somewhere. Melanie Griffin. Melanie Griffin is our winner for the fan pack of gear. So congrats to Melanie there. We know our social media team will follow up and get the prize there. All right. Our next letter moving on, G. What does G stand for? Uh, G is a $50 gift card. So you can spend that, I'm sure, at the Jacks Rangers. Or actually, better yet, go on to the Free Jacks merch page. They got a lot more better stuff on there. I love that. Okay, great. Let's see who this is. Pull the hat out here. Kim Glenister. Kim Glenister is our winner there. Fantastic, Kim. Brilliant stuff. I'm sure you can turn that $50 into $75 by going to the store. Who knows? We'll have to see. Um, Okay, H is the next letter. What's the prize? That is a home jersey for 21. So a home jersey. Exciting. Wear that uh, next year at Fort Quincy. I like that. Yes, that's a great one. Okay, let's see who this winner is. Ronan Farrell. Huzzah! Farrell, Ronan, you know Ronan? Okay, there we go. Brilliant. Uh, So the next one is going to be an IPA with Mags. That's exciting. He'll tell you all kind of interesting facts that nobody knows. Oh, I I bet. I mean, that's actually a big ticket item. An IPA with Mags, the CEO. All right, let's see who it is here. Uh, Shanali, we're a singer. Wow, Shanali, what a prize. Congrats. IPA with Mags. (laughs) <laughs> now, where, where where does the IPA take place? Because Max is all over. He lives in the woods sometimes. Sometimes he's helping Woodgy in the fields. I mean, he's he's all around. My guess would be in a bunker somewhere in the White Mountains. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Good. And what's our final our final prize you got there? We've got a cotton jersey. So that's exciting. Yeah. And that's one thing that I don't own, so I have to get one of those myself. Uh, I'm jealous. Okay. The cotton jerseys are really nice. I've got a couple of those as well here. Um, Edgar Kaplan Vigil is the winner there. Edgar gets Huzzah. the cotton jersey. So brilliant Jealous. work. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, pal, listen, I know you got to get off to some jars there. Uh, again, appreciate your support. Uh, I know folks love tuning into Jack's Rangers. Great work. Uh, we look forward to syncing some uh, IPAs with you uh, at the first home game coming up. That's going to be legendary. All right. I appreciate it, Dallin. Thank you so much. And go free Jacks. Huzzah. There it is. The Huzzah general himself. Phil, thanks very much for your time, pal. Fantastic to have on that little boy team promoting rugby in all corners of the world, particularly on Jack's Rangers. All right, so let's head up to South Africa next to the Republic to chat with front row powerhouse Peter Janssen. Peter, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. Where are you currently in the world, buddy? Um, I'm back in South Africa, back home. I uh, had a little bit of a, a little bit of a break um, just after the season. And yeah, finding myself back home now for a little while. So quite, quite nice. Yes, I bet. And listen, tell me, Water Buffalo, what have you got in store for you currently? Because you know the MLR season is an interesting one. You know, it goes for about six months yeah. and you have a preseason for, for about a month. Um, but what news have you got for us? Yeah, so I actually had a quite an exciting opportunity. Uh, I've got, I'm part of the Super Cup where I play for the Tel Aviv Heat. That's a team out of Israel. Now, I know everybody would think, what a team out of Israel, but it's actually one of the fastest growing sports in Israel. And a lot of, there's a lot of attention around it and a lot of attention around us because, I mean, we got a bit of a wild card pick for, for the Super Cup. And yeah, been busy with that for the last two months now. Uh, we've played three games. We've won two of them. We've beat the Russian champs, which is actually quite a big thing for us. And yeah, we've got, like I said, we've got a bit of a break now, two week break. Then I fly out to Israel and then we've got another full month of games and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to it. Oh, that's super exciting. I know you're going to have a lot of new fans tune in to watch the Tel Aviv Heat. Uh, you have a few South Africans on the team too. Some players you know and some players obviously you, you've heard of the grapevine. Give us some of the names that you'll be joining. Yeah, so the the, the, team, the great names that I've been playing with is Nick Groom. Uh, he's former former Northampton site, London Irish. I mean, I could go on Edinburgh captain. So he's been around at all. Stormers play as well. Josh Strauss, the bearded lion from South Africa. Uh, he's He's with us as well. 
and then the wrecking ball himself, Ronaldo Botma, as well. So there's a there's a bunch of ciphers with me. Uh, obviously, guys that coming through the ranks as well with Jewish heritage um, that played varsity cup and so on. So it's actually been a really really cool experience. And are you going to lead the team, Bryce? I heard that's what they said. Well, it's difficult with all the suffers there now. I mean, I can't <laughs> barely grab the tongue. So it's, it's a lot of heads ready to rise. So, but yeah, it, it, it's been fun. It's been really, really fun. Um, nice, tough competition. Like I didn't expect it to be. But yeah, always it's, it's just a nice surprising thing that happened. And I'm very grateful that I have it. Yeah, that's so great. Now the Free Jack fans are keen to, you know, make sure that you keep carving up and keep, keep the level so high, which is great, you know. So let, let's review this last season in MLR. 2021, the season came and went. You played the full season. What is your impressions now on the level of play? You obviously played against so many good sides. And also, when you're in South Africa and you're chatting to your friends, how do you compare it to rugby in South Africa? Yeah, look, when I'm back home, everybody, that's the first thing everybody asks me, well, how do you compare the level? Because obviously, everybody's curious about the MLR. It's, it's such a new thing, and everybody just wants to find out more and more about it. Um, if I could compare it, I would say rate it as a level at, at Curry Cup, maybe a little bit higher just because of the, the constant games we have to play. In Curry Cup, it's only about it's eight games at this at the moment it's played. And you get a bit of a more of a like a, a proper preseason and, a, you know, it's a proper run into it. With MLR, it's fast start and you have to keep the pace going because if you slack off a little bit a week here or there, you're out of points. So then it's such a difficult thing to chase and get him back into a contention for a semi-final spot. So I would compare it to a Curry Cup level, maybe a bit higher, uh, but yeah, around that, around about there. That's brilliant. And, uh, and then and then new head coach coming in, Scott Matthew, South African. Have you run across him at your time in South Africa? I have. I have not personally met him before, but I'm, I've, he's coached against me and obviously had some interactions with other guys in the teams and asked about how he was. And, I, and obviously the... the the whole message around Scott is he's absolute, absolute gentleman. He's such a lovely guy and a great coach as well. So he puts the players first and he, try, he tries to make it create an, a fun environment for the players as well. So, I mean, that's, that's what I've heard about, uh, about him from numerous players. So yeah, that's, that's basically what I know about Scott as in a nutshell, if I can say it like that. Oh, that's great. I know well, we had such a good time with Ted Lasso. He really was a character on and off the field. So we, <laughs> we look forward to having Scott here and yeah. pulling some pranks on him as well, you know. Okay, let, let's get some of your favorites. A uh, couple of quick favorites. In MLR, the last season, was there a favorite destination or stadium that you played at? Uh, the favorite stadium, I have to say, is the Coliseum, just because of yeah. the, the the history around it. And obviously walking out, it was bad. We only played in front of a little bit of fans there because COVID was quite still quite hectic at the moment uh, at, at that stage. But yeah, just walking out and knowing what's taken place there before and the games we've had there. I mean, the one game we've played against San Diego, we won quite good. And the other game was against Giltinis. I mean, there was their first game as well. And it was our first game of a proper season again. So that one stands out for me. That one really, really stands out as a stadium as a whole. Yeah. And then if we had to go to your favorite game that you played in all season? Uh, it has to be the last one we played against Atlanta at Quincy. Uh, it, it was it was something, it, w- it built up the whole week. It, it was just something that you'll, as a player, you look forward to when you know it's going to be not just because of the stadium, but because of the, the grudge match that it was for us. Because, we knew we had to put everything on the line and it's almost to make a lasting impression just on the season we had. So yeah, that's my favorite game. And the way we played, I mean, the type of rugby that was played, I think it was enjoyable, not only for rugby lovers, but for everybody that was just the first time watcher as well. Yeah, I know that'll go down in history for sure. Such an epic finish. You guys were so great. Yeah, yeah. Now switching across a couple of players on the opposition that you admire or respect that you played against this past year. Yeah, there's a few. I think the tougher games I've played against uh, was probably DC. Uh, there's a few DC guys. Uh, Callum Gibbons is one of them. Big yeah. Mike. Uh, the oh, yes. Mikey. So, 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 Stanley Fiangai. Oh, he's yes, tremendous, isn't that's, he? That's yeah. the one. That's the one. I've, I've rated him yeah. highly. That's probably yeah. one of the, the tougher. Then, obviously, if you go against Utah, you had mm. the guys. Um, I know Wilson, uh, Mitch's brother. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he, was, he, was, he was he was excellent. He just really stood out. Such he? a such a yeah. proper athlete. I mean, I haven't yeah. seen a loose forward like that in in years. And then yeah, that that's basically that stands out. Obviously, I can I can mention legends like Matt Gitto and yeah. and Adam Ashley Cooper. But I mean, from a local standpoint and guys mm. that are coming through the MLR that produced those three guys actually like maybe the first two like stood out for me the most. Lovely. Uh, and then last question for you, season five, the schedule's out, you know, so we can't wait. Tell us a yeah. bit about playing, obviously, at Quincy. I know you touched on it, but you're going to be at home all season long, which is going to be so great. 
Yeah, no, look, obviously the the the, the excitement around Quincy is it's uncontainable. I mean, yeah. that's what we wanted at the end of the season. We wanted to start off well and Obviously, the game against Atlanta, I think we proved that it was such a spectacle of rugby, if I can if I can put it like that. And now the standard has been set, not only for us as players, but the fans. The fans came out in their thousands and made it such a such a crazy experience. Like like I said, I still sit here at home and I speak to people yeah. and I said it was only five or ten thousand, maybe five between five and ten thousand people, but it was so loud. I could barely hear myself think at some stages, but yeah, so looking forward to going there and actually creating something we did at, at Union Point as well, where we went undefeated for a long time. That is something, I, I, well, me personally, I think that we should go and strive for again. Uh, well, we can't wait to have you back here. But in the meantime, Peter, I know friend, friends and family and, and fans will be tuning in watching you for the Tel Aviv Heat. Good luck for that, pal. We'll be cheering you on. And again, thanks for joining us, Free Jacks Live. It's always a pleasure to have the Biltong Monster General on, on the show. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. It's always nice speaking to you as well. Brilliant. Oh, good old Peter, the Africana there, doing really well in South Africa. We wish him well in Israel as well. Keep the comments coming. Brilliant to read all the messages so far of support. That's been fantastic. And let's switch across to our next guest, who is Mags, the unicorn known as the flame as well. But Alex Magleby, hot stepper on the field, hot stepper off the field, hot stepper in Free Jack's gear and attire. You've got Woody behind you singing your praises. Welcome to the live show again, my friend. I just realized it looks like Woody is actually trying to choke me. <laughs> trying to tickle it's my like ear. Tap, tapping you on the shoulder every time. How are you keeping? What's happening on your side? So everything is like oh, so exciting. We just announced the schedule, as everybody you know hopefully saw. We've got some fantastic matches, some real rivalries that we get to to really flush out and be on the good end of. You know that that New York rivalry, of course. You know the Chowder Cup. Uh, that's how we're going to end the regular season, and how great will that be? A Friday night, you know, at Fort Quincy is going to be um, pretty electric. You know, we got some great games with NOLA and just the whole rest of the, the schedule is really panning out well. You know, starting in February is a challenge for home matches, so we'll be on the road a bit. Uh, and that's how we started out in 2020, and we we're so close in some of those matches. And I think we're, as an organization, have, have, have matured, matured quite a bit. So that'll be um, how we handle those, uh, that big long road stretch will be a bit different. But super excited and to come back and home opener, St. Patrick's Festival, Free Jack style, you know, which you could argue is going to start that whole week long St. Patty's Week in New England. I mean, that's going to be epic, you know, and there'll be green everywhere. And I think the Free Jacks may have a green, green surprise or two there, which will be, which will be certainly very fun, you know, and then just the rest of the schedule is is so much fun. Like just you look at our, our match festivals and the themes around it and the causes we're supporting during those times. It's it's gonna be um I, I can't wait. A lot of work is going in and has gone into this. So it's good to finally share it. I was going to say, you guys have been working tirelessly, you know, when the season ended in August and there's so much happening. Luckily, I'm wearing the green. So that's kind of like fortuitous yes. as well. But yes. but Mags, what I want to say what was so great was how, you know, obviously playing away games are very tough early on in the season. But having the home games at the back end is really great. Look at Fort Quincy, as you mentioned. What a what a great display from the team on the field and the fans to finish out last year. Last year was epic finish to the year. You know, our fans were really patient as we were working through Union Point and um, the vicissitudes of having to build a temporary stadium on an old naval air base. And, um, you know, the, the folks at Union Point uh, Sports Complex were, were fantastic, but just trying to manage all of that in a pandemic and then to be able to end the season at our new home, you know, for the next five plus years uh, in a city that we're about to move our whole offices to and yeah. just really burn it hot. Um, you know, South Shore right off, right on the red line is going to be um, a whole host of fun. So. so season tickets are here. What sort of capacity, you know, do we have at the Veterans Memorial Stadium? And what sort of fan experience are, will fans expect when the season kicks off? Yeah, between seated, hospitality, standing room, we're at 5,000. Now, a good problem for us will be in the next year as we start maximizing that 5,000 is where do we add and where do we work with the city? Um, and Heritage Sports Ventures, who runs that facility, to continue to expand. How do we make that work? Um, but 5,000 in there is, will be rocking. I mean, that place will be epic. Yeah, it gets loud, exactly. Let's turn it back to reviewing briefly this, the 2021 season. We're talking about off the field and all the other great things that you know the, the New England team's all about. And then 
How did it go? And then what, what kind of new things can we expect to see in the community coming ahead in 2022? Yeah, so our measurables, a lot of them have to do with nothing that happens on the field because then we, we get to the field part and we know that that's, that's, a, that's the engine of, of this bus. Uh, you know, sponsorship, we saw a 300% increase from, from the year prior. Uh, the vast majority of our season ticket holders from 20 during the pandemic stayed with us almost 100%, not quite, but almost uh, into last season. So we have a really good core of founding members who have now become, you know, members for for season two, effectively for us, real season two. And um, so a lot of positives there. We're building out our, our uh, we're evolving and increasing the number of our, our ticket group, um, you know, customer service, which, which is really fun. And, um, you know, merchandise, Ollie, the, the unicorn, the ginger unicorn continues to, to print out some great branding around that. Which is which is really cool. Probably most important for me and most exciting is the work that's happening with the academy and the learn to play initiatives. You know, we've got rugby in a bag. We'll hit sixty schools over the next couple of months, which is going to be really really fun. But then just really taking that town to town to town throughout New England, and whether it's non-contact rugby to start, that's that's great. That's fine. And if people decide to do that forever, that's awesome. And then layering in contact uh, where it's possible and where people want it to be. And then just the high performance opportunities that now, um, you know, high school students are starting to get girls and boys um, and college young men and women. And um, of course, some of the best of our club game, uh, men and women now with the independents are able to get. So those initiatives are, are really, really important for the growth of, of the game. And if you look at this as like a 20 year plan over the next 10 years, it's audience and edu- educating that audience. So really bringing in new people who may not have been exposed to rugby or they only saw it on a college campus once when they were kids, they, they just haven't had a lot of exposure, but actually giving them a chance to uh, see the values of the game play out or just that people can, everybody can run up and down the field holding the ball and make decisions with it is enormously empowering. So that's, that is super cool. And hopefully then we get a world cup kind of halfway through that 20 year plan. And then, you know, sky's the limit really for how far this, um, this sport can go and certainly the free jacks. Yeah, it's exactly. Now we have a lot of fans. Some of them new, as you mentioned, are just tuning in right now, listening. Some live locally, some can come to the game, some live overseas, you know, so can you list some of the ways they can engage with the free jacks franchise? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the big ways, and I think our team, our content team, our social media team does a fantastic job. Uh, they, they produce some brilliant content that's not super focused in any one of our pillars, but you see some really, really good high-performance rugby. You see some really, really fun, you know, youth academy stuff. You see some just hilarious stuff that has to do with the off-field antics of the game, which is really cool. And I think they capture that narrative really, really well. Um, you know, and they're, they're, we're pretty active on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And, and you see, we've seen a lot of growth in those areas uh, for sure. But then just getting together, shoulder events, you know, the, the fan group, the first regiment, they're going to have their first meeting this month. How cool is that? Um, you know, and there, there's others kind of putting together things about how we can get people together in the off season. You know, in December, we'll probably have a, a get together party. We'll have the Jersey reveal event. We'll certainly then have kickoff party in January and the season's there. We got watch parties and we're at our pubs and we're hanging out. And at the same time, the learn to play initiatives are going and the rugby in a bag stuff is going. Uh, It's going to be a really epic, you know, next eight months for sure. Yeah, it really is. And do you mind plugging your podcast for, for us as well? Yeah, so season three is about to start. We've actually recorded a couple of the episodes already. It's a, it's a really, really great group this year. Uh, so we've been in the studio uh, jamming with some great guests that really just help us learn about our business and all the different aspects of our business. And uh, it's it's fun to share the, that information and those lessons with uh, with our fans, for sure. Brilliant. Full Contact CEO. I know they can catch it wherever they get their podcasts. And then a last couple of quick questions for you. Two new coaches coming in, Scott Matthew and, and uh, Mike Rogers. What do yeah. they bring to the table? I know that to get through the interview process, to get to those final positions was very tough because I love the way you and TK conduct those interviews and how you hire people on the basis of the, their value, not just their rugby knowledge. Yeah, you know, I think the, the, that that process has been, been run really well the last two years and TK's taken the lead on that. And hopefully everybody saw that with, with Mardo and what he was able to do uh, as part of the organization. And now... He's gone to super rugby. We know in the not too distant future, coaches are going to want to be reversing that direction, you know, super rugby to MLR, but we're certainly happy to support people as they 
they, they move on in, in, in their rugby rugby career. This year, once again, we had a lot of high quality people that we interviewed from, you know, the some of the best teams in the world who've, you know, World Cup winners and everything else. There was a lot, there was a lot of interest um, and kind of deciding what then is the right fit. Um, and all that glistens is not gold. And that we're actually looking for certain behavior traits that really fit into what we're about. Uh, what our players are about, what our staff are about, and most importantly, what our fans are about. And that's community first. So there's, there's a humility there. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's a hunger. That's, it's a gritty hunger, uh, but the ability to execute, you know, it's not just work for the sake of work, but actually effective work that's savvy. And that's very New England. Um, and, and, and folks who can have a bit of fun and bring joy to uh, the, the, the folks that are around, you know, the, the other players and everything else. And I think we really got that with Scotty and Mike two very different uh, styles of coaches, but who complement each other very, very well. Uh, and two world-class coaches uh, who are now going to be part of growing the game here in New England for the foreseeable future. So we're super excited for both of them to arrive here in the next few weeks um, so we can continue to move this thing forward. Beautiful, beautiful. And Mags, listen, you're, you're an inspiration on social media as well, the CEO of entertainment. If you were an emoji, what emoji would you be? Just one. Oh, just one, I would be the flame. I mean, you'd be the flame. On. Okay, good. Well, I was going to say the unicorn, the unicorn as well, but you know, you we gave uh, Ollie. yeah, we gave the unicorn to Ollie. So, you okay, know, okay, just be the unicorns. This is the, the yeah. one of the reasons I'm so excited, and hopefully, people saw this with the match festivals. I mean, literally, these are like amazing festivals, parties for two year olds to 102 year olds, uh, where everybody can have a lot of fun. But that, um, the unicorn festival, which is the Scottish theme night, I think it's the April 9th game going to be it's going to be absolutely epic but the week before is the apre rugby one which is like the end of the ski season everybody come in your 1980s you know hot tub time machine hot dog <laughs> outfits it's going to be absolutely epic and then the, the whole season like goes like that you know we got the jazz and uh, ska fest uh what is that the april april 30th there's a whole bunch like that we got the 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 ruck and shuck at the end of the year with with rooney uh with the end of the, the chatter cup which is going to be hilarious and amazing um, it's it's just a great it's a great um, eight matches and hopefully that leapfrogs us into the, a, a playoff home match and then a final at home. How cool would that be? That would be amazing, amazing. It'll give me more work as well on the broadcast, which is probably fantastic. So here we go, Magnuson. Thanks for your time as always. Brilliant to hear the behind the scenes, what's going on, uh, keeping us updated. Um, you're looking strong there, and uh, I want to see a tackle on Woodie later this season because he's having fun with you behind you right there. I am really getting fit just so I can take on Woody this year. I don't want to do my best. I'm doing like my early 5 a.m. rows just so I can get ready for uh, the Woodster. We call it. Yeah. We call it. Yeah. Thanks, Mags. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. In the words of Phil Harris, Mags is the fine line between genius and madman. Love that, Phil. Bloody hilarious. There was a question about the preseason. Good question as well. Yes, there normally is a preseason probably the month before, so January would be there or thereabouts. Uh, Nicholas uh, Block, thanks for asking that. Last time they had the preseason, unfortunately, the games, the scrimmages were cancelled because of COVID, um, and, and a couple of folks uh, uh, weren't able to make it, so that's why it was cancelled, but yes, should be a, a preseason in January. We'll keep you posted as well. Um, let's take a look at these magic graphics from the Free Jacks, the sleekest posters with these themed home matches, they're so cool. Oli Elhart is remarkable for creating these. Uh, these movie posters can also be purchased at thefreejacks.com. Rugby art that can slip into your house, uh, which is really cool. So also available, tons of merch. Winter is coming. It's getting dark at 4.30 in the afternoon. Mental, why did I move here? Ignore that last part. Uh, but let's certainly gear up. And uh, so many great items you can get there, uh, even for wardrobe changes like myself. It's really come, come ha in handy. Your season tickets are available. Hit the website, freejacks.com. And you can get your tickets to Quincy on the Red Line in Boston. What a brilliant stadium that is. And, uh, of course, you can come join us here for a few sneaky Baxter IPAs. The Madman Mags will be there and everybody else supporting, which is great. All right, our final guest, I know we went over by a few minutes, is Kyle the Eagle Sequera. So let's have a quick catch-up with the Bald Eagle himself. Well, here we have the crowd favorite back in the mix, the Eagle on Free Jacks Live. It is so good to have you back, pal. How are you keeping? I'm good. How are you? Awesome, thanks. What what have you been up to since the season uh, closed off uh, in August? Yeah, uh, just been working a lot lately um, and just been keeping hard at the gym, uh, running with Mr. Grover. So just been keeping in shape and doing my normal routine, I guess. Nice, that's great. Are you still shucking oysters for the day job? Uh, not at the moment, no. Just been working at a bar and uh, 
helping out a couple of friends of mine at a farm too. So it's been mm-hmm. very interesting. Nice, nice. And then, pal, uh, let's let's talk about Thanksgiving. It's coming up pretty soon. What does it look like at your household? I know you've been called the pot roast in the past. So, do you have your own turkey, like a twenty pound turkey, and then your family has another turkey, or how does it work? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my um, my whole so my mom's side of the family, we all get together. All my aunts, uncles, cousins, um, and we usually do a, a turkey, a ham, and a roast beef. Um, wow, all so three it's big. All three, every every holiday is like that though, because we have a huge, uh, we have a big family, so we wow. all eat, we all eat pretty good. That's awesome. I like it. I need to crack an invite to one of these at some point in time, you know. <laughs> then Eagle, listen, um, you saw the schedule that has come out. Big news from Major Rugby for 2022. For me personally, the biggest takeaway was how cool it is that in each conference, three teams get a chance to play in the postseason uh, uh, playoffs. So, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, it's good. Just like I feel like last year, like if that was the case last year, like we would have been able to keep going. Um, so if a team is hot and they're not in that top two position or don't start off as well, um, they're able to keep making a push for the playoffs. So I think it's really good for the league in general. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. That's great. And listen, are you still training very hard on your good looks? Of course, every day. <laughs> I noticed the hair coming around the side there. It's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Give us one of your inspiring quotes that you live by. Inspiring quotes that I live by. I thought my my favorite quote is probably the miracle speech that Herb Bricks gives to the uh, American team right before they play the Soviets. That's like, after hearing that, like that gets my blood boiling. That's probably my favorite all-time quote. That is legendary. Legendary. And I can just see you just, just going, going ham. Literally, you're eating everything in, way, in your way. Um, okay. Now, last thing. Where can people buy the replica mullets that are on sale? Uh, your signature shirts, your hats, all this sort of good stuff. They can buy them at freejacks.com. Sensational. Eagle, always a pleasure to speak to you. Short and sweet and crisp. And, and again, the crowd love what you do off the field and on the field, pal. We can't wait to see you back uh, in action for the 2022 season. Yeah, thank you, Down. It's been a pleasure. Awesome, pal. Lovely. Oh, Pot Roast gets put in the naughty chair. Sorry, big fella. Best looking prop in world rugby, I'll tell you that. Well, folks, Season 5 kicks off February 2022. We can't wait to celebrate at Veteran Memorial Stadium with you. Eight home games. Grab your tickets. All are welcome. Ages 1 to 101. Freejacks.com. There's the dates there. Make sure you pencil them and they're going to be absolutely fantastic. You can also catch the Freejacks podcast, Full Contact CEO with Alex Magleby, Pathways with Tom Kindly, Blood, Sweat and Beers with Tammy McQueen and Olympian Christy Kershey. We want to thank you for your support of rugby in the U.S. and particularly here in the six states that make up the Free Jacks. We look forward to catching you next month on episode 11 of Free Jacks Live. As we say here in New England, let's ride. There's New England. Stick the phases together beautifully. Jackson Thebus, the bus is full. Goes over Cecil Africa. Speed bump in the way. Still possession comes for New England. Tolatahu to the outside. It's Dougie Five, the try scoring machine. Five. Gets the first five at the Coliseum, and the Free Jacks have come to play. Kongasi for the Free Jacks, for the back. Conradi, and it's gaps opened up. Nobody saw that coming, not even Nostradamus. And John Poland gets try number two for the New England Free Jacks. Peter Janssen again, a man that loves the South African bright. He's bright for breakfast, lunch, and dinner if he could. Wife won't let him know as Fife goes on the outside. Dougie Fife in a bit of space gets the offload. Johnson back in field. Bowman is there, cleaning it up though for the Legion is Lutz. First man is good, first man. Justin good. Johnson has this one. 16 out. He's got that long arm open. Pinched it. Fife yet again. They work the short side. Dummies thrown. Back to Dougie Fife. Fife looking for the line. Fife is over yet again. Oh my Fife. This guy's brilliant. The mall goes strong for coach Ryan Martin's charges. Bowman comes in as well to help out, and Pipaletti's there. Bought the back for Hatakiyama. Playing the famous 34 20, 32 victory over the Springboks in Rugby World Cup 2015. And there it is, all the way for Hatakiyama! Get out of here!
Kenny Hatakiyama, one of the best rolling balls you'll see in world rugby, and it's the Free Jacks. They get try number five.